Okay, it's day 86 of my honeydew melon germination experiment. So I've had a problem with tendrils not wanting to bind to these uh, plastic support columns. You see one here and one here. So I started by finding this dead branch outside. It's very long and thin, about the same kind of diameter, even less so. But it's organic, and I think that may play a role in whether or not uh, tendrils react, because it might still give off, you know, odor molecules, uh, volatile organic molecules that the tendrils can detect and swing over to bind to. Because, you know, this one, it's been against plastic for so long and it hasn't even responded. You know, that, I think it's a little dormant at this point because it's been so long, but I don't think this is the way tendrils are supposed to work. So I'm going to try to supplant this one with uh, this stick and see what happens. Okay, there, that's good. So this stick is pretty long, it's about a meter long I would say, and this provides excellent support for the fork that I showed previously and you know between this leaves petiole and the stem. So we'll see and have the camera focused and zoomed in on this stick to see if anything happens over the next half hour. So this is an experiment on fast forward about 60 times, so one hour equals one minute. And I'm seeing that tendril will bind the wooden stick since it hasn't responded to any of the plastic support columns so far. At this part you should focus on the leaves on the top, on the very top of the shoot systems for both of these plants. Basically there's some phototropism going on with the leaves and the stems sort of curling towards my light. The movement right now is pretty noticeable. I mean, it's amazing how fast a plant can react and sort of move like that, although it's not really moving in like an animal sense. So aside from some phototropism and tendril flailing, not much happens, you know. It's quite a disappointing experiment. I expected a lot more to happen. I expected the tendril to, at least that one that's still active, to bind and coil tightly around the stick. Okay, it's day 87 of my honeydew germination experiment. So you'll notice I placed more of these plastic support columns on this side where the plants are. And obviously there's no reason to have them over there. Yesterday I tried this stick experiment where I gathered a dead stick. It kind of looked like it maybe was stripped by kids outside. And basically nothing responded to it. So, you know, that's kind of an inconclusive test. It's a negative result. I don't know if we need a living plant to get these tendrils to react but I placed more support columns on this side and let me get up close and show you one of the results so you know at first I just wanted to use brute force and coil these tendrils around the support columns but then I decided against it and I just placed more columns and here's one result uh, this tendril actually bound on its own. So that's kind of a promising result and basically there's some hope I guess for the rest of the system to function. I mean there's one down here that probably is not gonna do anything because it's so old and hasn't found anything to bind to and also that one you know I don't think it's gonna do anything either so t two long mature tendrils will probably never do anything this one has hope and I'll show more on it in the coming days and if you go up here there's another tendril so hopefully it'll coil around that column although this plant is uh, starting to grow upwards again and it's getting maybe too tall so here we have some more tendril flailing footage and basically this is, goes on for about two hours which is two minutes of this video 
So if you're not interested in seeing this or you saw my tendril whipping video outside of this, um, just ignore the next minute and a half about. So yeah, like two hours basically passed by and there are times at which this tendril is very, very active within minutes of real time. It whips around violently like that. So the movement here is very punctuated. Uh, nothing will happen for 15, 20, even 30 minutes, and then all of a sudden the tendrils will just kind of whip around and change by like maybe 60 degrees, 90 degrees, or even more, you know, 120 degrees, and be in a completely different position within a few minutes. So there's not much activity with these other two plants. Here's the second place plant. You know, you can see a white fly or some kind of fly uh, buzzing around it. And I have an experiment plant right now, right for that too. So the leaves are not that big if you compare them to the leaves here. You know, these leaves are enormous compared to those. And you know, I've seen some pictures online of what a mature honeydew plant looks like. And you know, the leaves should be much, much bigger in the end. So this plant in the middle is just in stasis. It's been stagnant for a long time. Um, we'll see what happens. I don't know if it can regenerate and create a new shoot apical meristem. I'd be very happy if it did. So the soil is still wet in the center. And well, I can see another white fly just kind of walking around on the wet spot. But anyway, I'm going to do an experiment to get rid of these white flies. One of the viewers of the series, Thunderlight and Bolt, suggested that maybe I could place yellow objects uh, such as pieces of paper with Vaseline on them to kind of trap these uh, white flies because they like the color yellow. The way flies work is they kind of don't necessarily respond to chemicals. Um, they mostly just like to land on stuff and buzz around and be really annoying and just kind of uh, you know fly you know a few feet above the ground and land on various objects so the physical space and you know where you place your traps is pretty important it has to be somewhat centralized in in a location where they want to land so I bought this tiny little travel size jar of Vaseline it's just pure petroleum jelly and well I'd have to peel this aside to look at it but you know in America, this is pretty common. I don't know if you're watching anywhere else. If they have stuff like this, uh, they probably do. And this is a value pack of 60 disposable paper dinner plates. So even if this experiment doesn't yield anything, I can still use this stuff for a lot of other things. It's uh, about a $5 experiment. Okay, so this is a shiny yellow paper plate. It won't get waterlogged um, right away from just some Vaseline. In fact, I don't think there's much water in here at all, but you know, I'm gonna smear this jelly on, and I'm guessing if I were a fly, you know, I'd probably wanna land on these rims here. Um, so yeah, you can't just conveniently smear the jelly there, so if a fly can find a way to annoy you, it pretty much will do it, and good thing is uh, the other side is white so they won't be landing on that 
so I'll have to get this low when I'm done or I could try having it facing upside down but you know I don't know if the fly would get trapped that way so I'm gonna start smearing this with Vaseline alright so I basically used one glove and I slimed up the entire shiny yellow surface of this plate so the next thing is where do I put this well there's a lot of empty space over there so I figure it all give that a try first okay so I think that's probably optimal placement because you know it's got a huge yellow edge exposed to these white flies and at some point you know just you know being flies they're gonna get up and fly and land on different things and if they really like the color yellow they'll land on that and get stuck and probably die so uh, we'll see what happens over the next few hours okay so white fly landed on there right away and we'll zoom in and see if we can get away oh it just flew off it that's a bad sign okay it's day 88 and as you can see I repositioned this yellow plate covered with Vaseline so there are quite a number of white flies um, having the same problem I'm not sure if they're harming the plant a lot or doing anything to it but uh, at this point I'm getting kind of annoyed with these little buggers so the center of the soil is still wet and I don't understand how that could be but it's just taking a really really long time for the water to be used up or dry out of uh, that huge ball of soil in the pot so anyway this yellow Vaseline trap isn't working in its current configuration I tried having the plate lying down yesterday on the soil that's not being used on the other half and today I had it taped all day to this uh, lamp post so I either have to think of another configuration or just call it quits with this idea okay so it's around midnight of day 88 and as you can see there are three of these white flies sleeping on the underside of a leaf uh, this is the most robust plant I'm not entirely sure that the scars were caused by only the Lysol I think these uh, little white flies had a lot to do with that I'm not sure if they're white flies or maybe one species among thousands of uh, little flies that feed on plants you know it's uh, hard to say for sure they don't look like your textbook white flies but they're definitely pests so I'm gonna try to squash these physically so I caught on a piece of packaging tape what I think to be a cloudy winged white fly so I trust that everyone watching will find this to be quite the enjoyable episode there's a lot of experiments and here I basically decided to coat the top layer of soil with sand and it's not even going to be an inch thick maybe just you know uh, a centimeter and a half maybe and what I'm trying to do here is basically protect the plants from those uh, vicious fungal gnat infestations or white flies or anything else that wants to try to parasitize my plants and the way this works is it'll prevent the larvae from escaping the sand layer because they don't want to go into sand and also to prevent the adults from laying eggs directly on the dirt where the decaying organic matter is and I'll show you more later in another episode but I think so far this has worked quite well okay it's day 90 so I can still see some fungal gnats buzzing around that's what I think these are uh, currently not white flies I think there may have been some white flies at some point but after my insecticide application a while ago I think all I've been seeing are these fungal gnats so they basically come in the potting mix and emerge from the soil so as I showed you earlier I layered some sand um, not even an inch thick in layer so the idea here is that the fungal gnats won't be able to get in there and lay eggs although I still see them buzzing on the surface you can see one right there right now um, sort of well it was in the center of the screen but basically the larvae will not be able to emerge as adults and you know come out of all the sand so curious thing is the sand comes all wet and I'm not sure how that happened maybe just being in a bag it really wicks away moisture and over time becomes wet and heavy I can't imagine that anyone would want to ship wet bags of sand versus dry bag the difference in the fuel costs are just astronomical 
So there are still three surviving plants. You know, the damage on the damaged ones uh, seems to be getting worse and worse over time. Um, you know, maybe it's just natural way for the plant to kill off unproductive leaves. Uh, that one, that one seems okay, but it's kind of low on the ground. Uh, for this one in the middle, that one is, you know, it's been damaged for a while. Uh, this one is basically dead and ready to be picked off or fall off. So this most robust specimen just keeps coiling uh, clockwise. I'm starting to spin the pot a little and basically make it grow in a circle because I don't want it just growing in one direction and kind of flopping against the blinds. So as you can see there's a large tendril waiting to coil onto something here. And we have this other plant that has a, a leaf that's almost dying here. You know that one's not doing too well uh, as well. And this one has some damage, so you know. Aside from that, this plant should survive. It has a very healthy uh, shoot apical meristem, but because it has so few leaves compared to this plant, um, basically. The action you see here is much more robust, you know, it just keeps pumping out new leaves and tendrils.